Uh, the t-shirt says, God is dead by Nietzsche. And in the back, it says, Nietzsche is dead, says God. Philosophy. Frederick Nietzsche. Someone, um, I commented on, uh, a Sadhguru post. There seems to be a lot of um, people who have these fake gurus. An enlightened master, you will never see like the original Sai Baba or the Buddha Shah or your Buddha or your Osho hanging out with your politicians or um, economic forums. Telling you to inject foreign particles in your body, which they don't know the consequences of agendas. Me and my father had this very interesting talk this week. Well, we have interesting talks every day. And he was speaking to me of uh, Socrates was poisoned by the hemlock tree. Jesus was crucified on the cross. Um, what's that famous mystic? Oh, the, he's a Muslim. They cut his body into pieces and he was just laughing and laughing. Oh, the name will come to me. Mansur. That's it. Any enlightened master, any man that has spoken truth on this universe has been crucified, executed, and vilified because nobody wants you to awaken. Because when you awaken is when you actually connect to your truth. And that's when you have all your power. See, they love it when you're miserable. They want you to be miserable, unhappy, because miserable, unhappy people, well, they're the easiest ones to control. If you're happy and in your bliss and divine and connected, you're not going to go outside of yourself or to the other to look for guidance, to look for knowledge. Because your inner world, your inner being is so filled with light, knowing and joy that you don't have to go outside of yourself because nothing exists outside of you. I am the universe. I am God. I am all of creation. And this is not coming from ego or from mind. When you connect to an energy of truth, of love, of relaxation, when you connect to the divine, how can you say that you are not God? Even the Bible says we are of God's image. Well, if I am of God's image and I am living my truth, that means that I am God, not the God, but a particle of God consciousness. I am an energy, a vibration, a frequency that is God. And... You know, you look at all of these things that are going on outside of ourselves that have no meaning anyways. But when do you ever see a truthful guru or an enlightened master who has not been taken away into some form of this world of darkness, execution, like I said, all of this, since Socrates' time. And Jesus bearing the cross. Who wants to carry a cross on their back all of their lives? And do I even believe these books? No, I'm sorry to say it. I don't believe the books. There's an agenda. All of the truth has been disturbed, disrupted, and taken away from us. 
it's not to say that I don't believe that there, these masters are amazing masters, but the truth that has been spoken to us or what has occurred or how they lived is not the truth of what's happened. Even Jesus was taken out in, you know, for the 18 years that he was in India when he went to go meditate and there's a tomb there of him in Kashmir. Where is all of this stuff? And now they want to put children into school even younger because they know they can program them. And when they can program you, that is when you can become controlled because you are given all of these beliefs, all of these thoughts, all these ideologies that aren't even yours. When you are born, you are born an energy of pure consciousness, of no mind. But then they start chucking stuff on you, feeding you stuff, feeding you garbage, feeding you lies, feeding you thoughts, feeding you knowledge, feeding you science, all of these types of things. They're not even your other's thoughts. They're not your thoughts. They are the thoughts of another. How do you know that this is true? And don't believe anything that I say. Please do not believe anything I say because your experience is your experience and that is your truth. My truth is not going to be your truth. You need to follow yourself. You need to become your own master. Nobody knows but you. You live in this being in this temple. And this body will decay too. So don't get too attached to it. But treat it like a temple. A holy shrine. For it's been gifted to you from the gods. And when I'm speaking of gods, I'm not speaking of this and the Quran or Hinduism or Christianity, I'm talking of an energy. Because what existed, if you really look at history, they say the Bhagavad Gita and all these books, the Upanishads and all these books were the first. Okay, so what was before that and what was lost? And who translated these books and how conscious and aware were they? How had they been programmed? How had they been raised during that time? to what it was that they transcribed and they related to you as being the truth. Is that really your truth? You know, Buddha says one thing. He says, the only thing in life that's constant is change. So if change is the only thing that is constant, how can a book from 5,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago be relevant today? Okay, so you can take some of the main basis of it, which is truth and love and all of this. But all these stories, these ideologies of what's gone on, this too shall pass, like Abraham Lincoln said. It's done. It's not the truth. It's the past. And if you're living in the past, you're living in regret or fear. And if you're living in the future, you're living in anxiety. And ahead of yourself. The only thing that is true is the present, but man is too scared to live in the present moment because you have to become totally present. You have to connect to the divine and surrender. A man is so scared to surrender. Because surrender means going into the unknown. Connecting to the invisible, the unseen. And we're taught to live in this world of tangibility. Touch it, feel it, see it. Oh, that's my truth. Somebody else said it. It's a fact. It's been proven. Proven by who? How have they been conditioned? What program did they go through? What teachings indoctrinated them? What childhoods did they go through? What religions did they go through? What kind of system were they corrupted into being? If they want to take you at the age of four, you know, it's very interesting, children... At the age of four, you know, they talk about past lives and imaginary friends and all these 
amazing things they can see because their energies haven't been tainted in most cases. If they know that they want to take them at such a young age now and start corrupting them, it's because they know that they have to get control in order to program them sooner so that they can hook them in. Because the sooner you are hooked in, the harder it is to get out of the system. And the more you live in the mind, the more you live in calculation, the more you live in competition, the more you live in the other, the more you will become trapped in a slave. And man is so scared to have an enlightened female. We have people like Kuan Yin and all these people, but when was the last time we had an enlightened female? Man is very scared of woman, even though we are one energy made of man and woman. So when we're living in true harmony and balance, it's a 50-50. But man is very, very scared of woman's energy, her inner instinct, her inner knowing. So he tries to control her. And the reason I, you know, my father told me something interesting. Um, there's this beautiful kid that works with my father, Ali, and he's a goat herder, which pretty soon I'm going to have my own. Um, he was showing this video in some field of uh, these Muslims fighting each other and bloody fight and all of this. And the question is, where is your God there? What kind of God would want you to fight in such a brutal, sick way for his truth? What truth? When did God come down and tell you your truth was more truthful than another being's truth or that violence is truth? You know, all these wars that we have going on right now, you know, it's a business. It's been a business since the beginning of time. And we're led to believe it's religion. Oh, you bombed us. You did this. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a dollar bill sign. There's always an agenda. Because those that live in the top live in sickness and more is never enough and they want everything and they want you and they've had you and they think they own you and they do own you until you become your own master then you're unstoppable untouchable And I choose to be happy. I don't really care what's going on. You know what? I came here to be joyful and blissful and dance. What makes someone more insane than a happy person? And I'm not talking about this false positivity. We go through dark nights of the soul. I too go through this. But that's not the totality of my being. That's an expression in the moment. I experience it. I don't clench on to it. I heal it. And then I transform it. Unless you become your own master, you're just going to keep on taking birth after birth after birth. And like my father says... Camelia, it's going to be very, very hard to find parents who are conscious and alert and aware. It'll be very hard to take birth again because who are you going to take birth with? Who is going to source your creation? How are they going to bring you up? How are you going to be molded? How are you going to be programmed? How are you going to unlearn? You know, in the Bible, we have this interesting thing called the commandments. What kind of God commands? It's 
So when Nietzsche says God is dead, I'd have to agree. God in the textbooks is dead. God in religion is dead. Actually, I think all of these books have no relevance and truth to them. They've all been distorted. They've been told by another. I don't know who the other is. I don't know the truth. I don't know the source. And considering that most of humanity since the beginning of time has been living unconscious, how can I believe that those books were even true? And the people that got their hands on these books that wanted to program us and put us into these boxes and control, how do I know these books haven't been manipulated? Everything else has been manipulated. Your food's manipulated. Your thoughts are manipulated. Your programs are manipulated. But don't believe me. Only believe yourself. Become your own master. When you become your own master, you stop looking for the other. The other to save you. The other to love you. The other to take care of you when you're sick. The other to be there for you. There is no other. You came alone, you will die alone. It's very easy. Sure, we can have people along the way, beautiful souls, yes. Sometimes things last a moment, a reason, a season, a lifetime. But generally speaking, most of these relationships are just masks upon masks because we're looking for the other to be there for us, to save us, to be there for us to the end of time, to help us, to you know, buy time for comfort so we're not alone in all of this. But once you become so connected to your inner being, the search for the other disappears. I never feel such great depths and moments of ecstasy when I'm alone in silence, in nature. When I can hear the breath of the universe. When my life is so simple. I just want a simple, simple life. I'm not looking to be rich. I'm not looking to be a guru. I'm not looking to be God. I'm not looking for more IMBD credits. I want nothing. I just want to experience each present moment, conscious, alert, aware, in my inner being. Unlearning. Unraveling the layers of the onion. And that comes through meditation. When you can sit alone, and I'm not talking guided meditations. I'm sorry to say this. You know, I understand everything has a purpose. But the guided meditation is not going to allow you to hear your inner silence because you're going to have the talking and the thinking of the other. When I'm talking meditation, I mean being totally conscious and alert, whether you do a dynamic meditation, whether you sit there and breathe, whether you're washing the dishes and you're so totally into the totality 
of washing the dishes, feeling the water, feeling the rag on there, watching what you're doing, so conscious and present. That is meditation. That is God being, knowing, and only you can do that and only you can take you there. You can read all the books in the world, like my father says, but it's all borrowed thought and information. Unless one experiences, unless one goes into the depth of the unknown, one will never know. If you can sit for an hour by yourself a day, or if you can do A source of meditation such as dynamic or some breathing meditation and carry that into your daily life your whole universe will transform I was listening to this girl on YouTube she has a uh, I sometimes see things for 20 seconds and she was talking about, oh, her friend's a painter and um, spends thousands of hours on details of paintings and she's only charging a thousand dollars for her painting and her friend doesn't know her value and all of this. How can you know your value when you don't even know yourself? You're like a hooker then, even if it's art, you're just a prostitute for a price, even if it's art. If you don't know yourself, you're just selling yourself. You're just a dollar bill sign. In some ways are classier or healthier or, or more acceptable or, or whatever than others. If you put yourself and who you are as a price tag, you will never be priceless. You will always be driven by the outside. You will always be controlled. You will always live in ego. You will always have a price. You will always be able to be purchased. You'll be a commodity like everyone else. For sale to the highest bidder. Don't believe me. Don't believe anything. Like Rumi says, what you are seeking is seeking you. So seek your truth. Drop the past, let it go. It's done. You know, I was telling a friend I used to be a big smoker and drinker back in the day and I was pretty wild back in the day in all of these things. I don't regret anything. I dropped it all, I have no guilt. And I'm so glad because when people come to me now, I just don't read you from a book, oh yeah, you used to smoke, oh it's hard to give up. Oh, you had this addiction, it's like that. No, I've experienced. And now I do nothing for years and years and years. And I wouldn't take it back. Would I treat my temple the same way I would uh, with the consciousness I have now? No, but I'm not who I am now, who I was back then. So how can I judge what I am in this present moment for what I was back then when I was living unconsciously? But those experiences 
all made me who I am today. And I love the totality of my being. Everything. I celebrate me. There will never ever be another me. When you become so original and so unique, it's like that rap song, uh, often replicated, never duplicated. You can try and try and try, but you will never have that same juiciness, that same touch, that same sparkle. Because you can't copy an original, you can't copy a Da Vinci, you can't copy a Mozart, you can't copy a Buddha and Osho. But you can copy your, um, your Sadhgurus, your politicians. They just keep on coming and coming and coming. But a politician that you couldn't probably uh, replicate would be someone like an Abraham Lincoln, who came from a very poor father and mother. Uh, but these are rare souls also too who get taken out so but he was an original and he stuck to himself hence why he has such a profound effect in this universe like a nicholas tesla you can accumulate all of the things you want in the outside world but unless you know yourself, you will feel empty and you will be empty. You will never get to the totality of your being. We're in a massive shift right now in the universe, a beautiful, beautiful shift. Many people are deciding to leave different timelines, go to different places, leave their bodies, become conscious, aware and alert. There's this magic, this universal force right now that's transforming and transcending everyone and forcing and shaking a lot of people to wake up. And beautiful things are coming and beautiful things are here. And this universe is so beautiful. I feel so blessed to be connected to existence. To be given this experience of life. For all the people, places, things that I have known and unknown for those that have loved me, for those that have hurt me, for those that have taught me, for those that have lied to me, for those that ex have expressed truth. I am forever grateful to existence for all of this. Let's see what we can find before we kind of wrap this up. A tree that stands near the bank of a lake will be reflected in the lake upside down. The branches of the tree 
that spread near the bank of the lake are pointing towards the sky and its roots spread down within the earth. But the reflection will be reversed. In the reflection, the roots will point upwards and the branches will point downwards. All reflection is in reverse. Reflection is never straight. If we keep this scientific fact in mind, then it will be easy to understand this sutra. When things are seen, they are seen in the reverse of how they actually are. Because seeing is only a reflection. The eye is also a mirror. Only reflections are made on the eye and the reflections are always in reverse. It is also true that this world is not as you see it. The laws of the world are just the opposite of what they seem to be. Appearances are the exact opposite of the reality. On the basis of this fundamental understanding, Indian seers have used a very old symbol, and that symbol is mentioned in this sutra. This manifest world is likened to an eternal people tree. If the tree were to have its roots above and its branches below, in the roots of this tree lives the Brahman. It is deathlessness. This manifest world is likened to an eternal pipal tree. If the tree were to have its roots above and its branches below. Normally a tree has its roots at the bottom and its branches at the top. But in this sutra, Yama is saying that in this dimension, roots grow upwards and branches grow downwards. The truth of existence is just the opposite of what is seen by us in this manifest world. And this is the case in all different aspects of life. Try to understand it. You think that death is an enemy of life, but the truth is just the opposite. Life cannot exist without death. So death is not the enemy of life at all. On the contrary, it is a friend. There is no possibility for life to exist without death. The day death disappears, life also will disappear. But all things become upside down in the process of our seeing. We think that life and death are opposites, but actually death is the foundation of life. Life cannot exist without death. When you surrender to existence, when you go into the unknown, when all of fear dissolves, when you become deathlessness, that's when you truly start living. And the only way to truly start living is through meditation. And that was from the book, The Message Beyond Words. Live, live totally live uniquely, dance with existence, be in bliss, know thyself, be thyself.